Hi. So today let's have a look at what are polynomials and how are they classified. Now a polynomial is basically an algebraic expression which contains variables as well as constants and has integral power of the variables. Just for example, consider these two algebraic expressions. The first one contains the variable x as well as some constants. All the powers of x are positive, are integers and they are positive, right? So this is a polynomial. Whereas the second polynomial, it has a power of x as 1 by 2, right? So that is not an integral power, that is not an integer, that's a fraction, right? So this is not a polynomial, okay? Now let us see how the polynomials are classified. The polynomials are basically classified in two different types. The first type in which the polynomials are classified is the number of terms. Now, if the polynomial contains just one term, that is called as monomial. If it contains two terms, that is binomial. And if it contains three terms, that is trinomial. Okay. Whereas the, whereas the polynomials can also be classified based on the degree of the equation. Now, what is the degree of the algebraic expression? Consider this expression. So, the highest power of the variable, that is x, that is 3. So, the degree of the expression is 3. So, based on the degree of the expression, we can classify the polynomials. For example, if the degree of the expression is 1, that is called a linear polynomial. Whereas, if the degree is 2, that is called as quadratic polynomial. If the degree is 3, that is called as cubic polynomial. There are two different types, the polynomials can be classified. One is based on the number of terms, the second is based on the degree of the polynomial. Okay. Now, let us understand how the polynomials are added or subtracted. Now, consider these two polynomials, right? Now, if we need to add these polynomials, simply what we have to do is we have to write both the polynomials with the addition sign in between, okay? After we write this, now we'll see which are the like terms. Like terms are those terms which have the same degree, right? So, the first term which is 4x cube. Now, does this complete equation contain any term which has the variable x cube? No, right? So, we'll write 4x cube as it is. Now, x square. Now, how many terms do contain x square? We have two different terms containing x square, right? That are 2x square and 2x square. If we add them, I'll get 4x square. In the same way, we can keep on adding the like terms and finally, arranging it in the descending order, I'll get the addition of the polynomials. Okay? So, this is how you add the polynomial. Now, let us have a look how we subtract the polynomials. Suppose we need to subtract the same two polynomials. What we do is we write the first polynomial, we write a subtraction sign and we write the second polynomial inside a bracket. Now that bracket is very important because in the next step when we open the brackets, the sign of all the terms in the second polynomial gets changed. Okay? So the second polynomial becomes minus 2x square, minus 3x and minus 5. In the same way, getting the like terms together adding the like terms. Now, you can see here the term containing x square that is 2x square and minus 2x square. They both are same, right? So, we can cancel them out as they have the exactly opposite sign. So, there is no term of x square in the answer. So, we have 4x cube, then we have one term which contains x and the constant terms. There are two terms. So, we can subtract the constant terms and get the answers. Okay? So, this is how we subtract the polynomial. Now, the, after the addition and the subtraction, let us have a look how we multiply the polynomials. Now, if we need to multiply these two polynomials, the first one being x minus 5 and the second one being 2x square plus 3x plus 1. If you need to multiply these polynomials, what I will do is, the first term of the first polynomial is to be written, that is x and the second polynomial in the complete bracket. Then, the second term in the first bracket, that is minus 5 and then the second bracket again. So, this is the first important step. Now, after this, I need to multiply x with all the terms in the second polynomial, okay, in the given bracket. So, what I will get is, I will get 2x cube, then 3x square and x. Whereas, in the same way, multiplying all the terms with minus 5, okay, minus 5, remember the sign minus 5. So, what I will get is minus 10x square, minus 15x and minus 5, okay. So, this is your polynomial. Now, we need to again get the like terms together. The highest power is again x cube, which is just a single term. So, I will write it as it is. The second degree is x square. 
So what I'll do is I'll see which terms contain x square. There are two terms which contain x square, right? That is 3x square minus 10x square. What is 3 minus 10? That is minus 7. So minus 7x square and so on. So taking the like terms together and subtracting or adding according to the sign, I'll get the final answer. So this is how you multiply the polynomials. Now let's see how do we divide polynomials. Now if we need to divide these polynomials, the larger polynomial inside the division sign whereas we have to divide it by x minus 5. Now you can see the outside polynomial that is the divisor contains the highest degree as x whereas the dividend contains the highest degree as x square. Okay? So we have 1x which is to be multiplied and we also need to multiply it by 2. right? So if I multiply divisor by 2x, what I will get is 2x square minus 10x. Okay? So now if I subtract them, remember when you subtract the sign of the second term gets changed. So I will get is 13x and the term from the numerator that is 1 comes down with it as well. Okay? So now, now I can see the degree of the divisor as well as the remaining term is the same x raised to 1. right? But only we need is the term, the coefficient of x that is 13. So we need to multiply it by 13. We need to multiply this device by 13. So I'll write 13 in the quotient and after multiplying it by 13, I'll get this again. Now once I get this, I can subtract these again and I'll get the remainder as 66. Okay. So this is how we divide the polynomials. Okay. Now division of polynomials can be done by two more methods that is synthetic division and a linear division. Now let us have a look what is the synthetic division. Consider these same polynomials. Now if we need to synthetically divide this, the necessary condition is the divisor should be a linear expression x minus 5. Right? The degree is highest degree is 1. So that's a linear expression. So what we do is we make two lines in such a way and write the larger polynomial in the coefficient form. We have to write just the coefficients of the polynomials that is 2, 3 and 1. Now we have to divide this polynomial by 5. Remember the polynomial is x minus 5. We need to change the sign to 5 and we need to divide it. So the first, how do we divide it? Just have a look. The first term 2 comes down as it is. We need to multiply 5 with 2. 2 into 5 gives you 10. Right? Then we need to add again the numbers. That will give you 13. 13 again into 5. 13 into 5 is 65. 1 plus 65 gives you 56. So this is your remainder, 66. Whereas these two terms, right? These two terms, 2 and 13, this becomes your quotient. The 13 becomes your constant term and increasing the power by 1, that gives you x. Increasing the power of the variable by 1, this gives you 2x. Okay, so your quotient will be 2x plus 13, whereas your remainder will be 66. So this is how you synthetically divide it. Okay, now also let us also have a look how do we divide it linearly. So how do we divide it linearly? We write the dividend as it is. Now the first term of the dividend is kept as same, that is 2x square, whereas the second term is to be split into two parts. Now how do you find those two parts? We multiply the coefficient of the first term with the divisor, that is 2 into minus 5, that will give you minus 10. So plus 3x, that is the second term, is to be divided into two parts. The first part is minus 10x. What should be the second part? So the second part should be plus 13x, because adding both of these, I'll get the value as 3x. Okay. The last term remains the same, that is plus 1. Now, if I see the first two terms now, I can take 2 as well as x common in both of them. So what I'll get is, I'll get x minus 5. Okay. The next term remaining is 13x. Again, 1 is to be divided into two parts now. Now 13 into minus 5 gives you minus 65. So 1 can be separated as minus 65 plus 66. Again, from the next two terms, I can take 13 common. So I'll get as 13 into x minus 5 plus 66. Now you can see the first two terms, they have the term x minus 5 as common. 
So I can take x minus 5 in one bracket and the other bracket will contain 2x plus 13 plus 66 will be your remainder whereas the term which is with the divisor that becomes your quotient. So this is how you linearly divide two polynomials.